This is an introduction lecture to this course. So we're going to talk about how to use the lectures, how to use the reading quizzes, how to use perusal, uh, and then talk about endnotes and introductions in the Academy pagination. So first, lectures. So these lectures are designed to be watched before you do the relevant reading. So most lectures are linked to one of the readings and you watch the lecture before the reading. The lecture is designed to provide you with background information about the reading uh, that you'll find helpful for the reading, uh, so that's why you watch them before. If the lecture is different, if you can watch it afterwards or something, I'll just say it in the lecture. The reading quizzes are designed to sort of guide you through the reading and point you to important parts and also give you feedback on how well you've understood the reading. I can't put every important idea in the reading into the reading quizzes. Uh, some ideas just it's, it's hard to make a question about them in a reading quiz or something like that. So don't assume that just because some topic or page doesn't show up on the reading quiz, you can skim it. Uh, that's not true. Everything in the readings is important. But uh, the reading quizzes are helpful for pointing you towards things that you might have otherwise missed. And like I said, you get uh, pretty immediate feedback as to whether or not you've understood the readings. You're encouraged to uh, ask me if you're curious about an answer to a reading quiz that you don't understand. So that's one of the reasons the quizzes exist. They sort of, they bring to light something that you didn't understand, and uh, that should not be the end of the discussion. Rather, it's the beginning. You say, oh, now that I misread this part of the reading, now I have a question that I can ask, maybe in class or in office hours or something. So. Uh, when you get something wrong on a reading quiz, that should be an opportunity to investigate more, and that can be a launching point for something you talk about in class, or on perusal. So that brings us to the next point, which is how to use perusal. So perusal can be used for all sorts of things, and I encourage you to check the document on Canvas that lists some of the things that you can do in perusal. But really, I think the more, the better. There's kind of no reason not to put as much into perusal as you can. Uh, I think it's like a really helpful tool. I don't, or at least I don't plan on responding to all the questions or even any of the questions in perusal. Those can be jumping off points for discussion in class, but number one, there's too much stuff there usually for me to respond directly to everything. And number two, I think it's helpful to sort of have conversations through perusal back and forth rather than me just coming in and saying something. Uh, but I think one of the main uses for perusal is uh, noting things that you don't understand and describing why you don't understand them because that gives people a chance to come in and maybe say that they also don't understand or to maybe help you figure things out or maybe to give a conclusive answer if there is just a good answer. So I think it's very useful for questions, but it's useful for lots of other stuff too. Two technical points about reading. So in the perusal reading assignments, uh, I don't include either the, uh, I almost never include the editor's introductions or, and I never include the end notes. So for each piece, like all, all of our Kant readings are coming out of this book, Practical Philosophy, which is just a, a compendium of a lot of things that Kant wrote on practical philosophy. And each of the pieces in the book has an editor's uh, introductory uh, essay. So for instance, we have, uh, we don't want this, we don't want this. So we have what is, whoops, we have what is enlightenment. And uh, this starts with an editor's introduction. I think I might've actually included this in perusal, but uh, all the pieces in the book start with an editor's introduction. These can be useful. They're always very short, so uh, you're encouraged to read them, uh, but you don't have to. Uh, they're never crucial. Maybe, I don't know. It, it would maybe be good to read them. You can download this, this book, this Kant Practical Philosophy from Canvas, or I think from Perusal. So there are always those editor's introductions. And then what is definitely never in Perusal is at the very end of this book, there are end notes. So uh, every once in a while in the text, uh, let's see if we can find one. Well, there are footnotes in the text and those usually talk about translation. So a lot of the footnotes just give you the German word. Uh, whenever Kant uses something in another language, the footnotes will translate that. Ah, but here we go. Sometimes you have numbers, which are end notes. 
And so then you go to the very end of the book, and these are editor's notes on uh, things. Okay, we have to go much further. Much further. Uh, these are editor's notes on things, so editorial notes, and they're arranged per essay. So you know, um, here's the metaphysics of morals, and here are all the notes from the metaphysics of morals. The more helpful way to find them is up at the top of each page. We have editorial notes to pages 393 to 407 to 423 to 459. And so basically, when you find an end note, uh, just find out what page it's on, then scroll down to the very end and find out, find the notes for that page and then find the thing. These vary in helpfulness. Sometimes they're very, I shouldn't have used very in two ways. These, these uh, some, some are more helpful than others. Some are very helpful, some are not so helpful. Um, I think it's a good idea to read them all, so I would recommend doing it. There's just not an easy way to set that up in perusal, but uh, I basically I would suggest just have the PDF downloaded so that you can find them. Um, so, you know, read all the notes uh, is my suggestion. Um, and yeah, and then finally in the quizzes, and on the syllabus and so on, uh, you'll see sort of two page numbers cited for all the Kant stuff. One is the book page number, so for instance, 386. But then there's also these page numbers which show up in the margins. So this is 6230. Then later on, we get to 6231. That's the next page, 6232, and so on. Uh, these are called academy pagination because these are the pages from uh, definitive uh work of Kant's, like a complete work of Kant published in the German Academy a while ago by the German Academy. So anyways, uh, these are what people will often use to refer to Kant's writing because they're sort of standardized across every single text. And so uh, you'll see me use these in the course, and then uh, a lot of the secondary literature we'll be reading will often cite this, and really only this, in order to cite Kant. So uh, try to get used to using these page numbers as well as these page numbers to refer to content.